Hello all, I am your TA Balaji and today we will discuss assignment 2. First question, what expression will the register EAX bear in the above, assemb uh, above inline assembly code is executed until statement level? So let's go over this one uh, by one. So firstly we note that these are the values of X, Y, A and B. And now the first statement EAX corresponds to this, then this, and now we perform X or A or B, and then we do move EBX comma uh, X, which is this, and we uh, uh, we and uh, EBX with uh, with Y, which is X and Y, and finally we obtain this expression. So this is the expression that is present inside the register EAX, and hence this is the right answer. Now let's move on to question 2. What value will the register EAX bear if the above inline assembly code is executed until statement level? So uh, since we know that these are the values of x, y, uh, a and b, I have calculated uh, the expression that is you substitute all the values in this expression, convert it into binary, perform the required OR operations uh, here and the AND operation here, you obtain this and this. Finally, perform XOR between these two, you obtain this. This number in decimal is 5 and hence the answer is 5. If statement 3 was changed to this, that is now we are changing the values of X, Y, A and B. Now you recalculate, uh, you substitute all these values inside the same EAX expression and uh, I recalculated what that uh, is. So you obtain two or six or three, um, XOR with three and one. So when you perform this, you obtain this and this, and OR of these three give you one, 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 and of this gives you zero, zero, one, and you perform XOR, you get one, one, zero, which is six in decimal, and hence six is the right answer. Okay, moving on to question number four. What is the value of the C variable uh, Z after the execution of statement 13 in the above inline assembly code? So we will now again uh, look at this one by one. Uh, what happens to EAX in this statement? So XOR of EAX comma EAX basically nulls out or basically uh, makes EAX equal to zero here move ecx comma y so ecx has the value which is y which is 4 here okay so we have 4 then increment ecx so ecx is incremented to 5 and again decrement ecx is decremented to 4 and jump 0 last so basically uh, this will execute only when uh, the zero flag is set however in this case the zero flag is not set hence we move on to the next instruction add eax comma x so EAX is first, uh, I mean, we, uh, the value of EAX here is three. Okay, then decrement ECX. Now the value of ECX is four. Jump non, not zero, that is when the zero flag register is not set, move back to LBL. So now it uh, goes back to LBL uh, label, and now again performs add EAX comma X. So the next addition happens, and uh, ECX is now decremented to three. Now again, the next addition happens, E6 is decremented to 2, the next addition happens, E6 is decremented to 1, um, and finally, when the next addition is, uh, is scheduled, ECX is becoming 0, and hence, it moves outside the loop, because this jump non-zero condition is no longer valid, and hence, an additional uh, addition of uh, 3 is not happening. So The number of times 3 is added is 4 times, so it is 4 into 3, that is equal to 12 and 12 is the right answer. 12 is being fed into this uh, uh, variable set. Okay. Yes. So that is the right answer. Note that uh, for this question alone, statement 7 was interchanged with statement 8 in the above code. So uh, let's say you interchange these two. 
that is 7 is this and 8 is this we use another color let's say uh, 7 is this 8 is this when you interchange this all that happens is initially ECX would be decremented to 3 and then it would be incremented to 4 but however the operation after that is exactly the same as what we discussed for the previous question and hence there is no change therefore you must uh, expect that 12 is the answer that uh, you obtain here okay for question 6 and 7 note that uh, the statement 3 of the above code is changed to this okay so what is the value of c of the c variable z after the execution of uh, statement 13 in the above uh, inline assembly code so once this all of these are zero when you execute it one by one here when you come to this statement jump zero last what happens when uh, increment of ecx is performed so let's just look at that okay so let's just look at that statement here increment ecx ecx is incremented by one so initially ecx would be zero and ecx is incremented to one and it's again decremented to zero once this is decremented to zero the zero flag register is now set and hence the it moves to the uh, label last so move z uh, comma ex and ex is also zero so this is the answer for z right so the yeah, accepted answer is zero uh, question seven is being omitted due to uh, some uh, due to the way question seven is framed so we will not be looking at it here given below is a c code analyze the following code and answers answer questions eight to ten based on it okay which of the following C statements do not get compiled to an equivalent assembly statement when compiled for maximum optimization? Okay, so let's just look at this one at a time, right? So when you say return R, the statements that relate to R are only R is equal to A into S and now again A and S, right? So A is equal to X plus Y, S is equal to A plus Z. These statements cannot be removed. But however, the other statements, right? When you look at S, this statement, that state, this the statement number six actually replaces the value that was present in S. So that is not of significance because its value is erased and written as A plus Z. And now look at uh, also statement seven, Q equal to A by S. We do not use Q anywhere over here in the return statement because uh, in the return R, only A and S are concerned uh, are of interest and hence Q is, of not, in, uh, is not uh, considered here, right? So we can, uh, in when compiled for maximum optimization, these two statements, five and eight, do not uh, result in an equivalent assembly statement. That is what is happening. Okay, you can check this out in uh, Godbold website and you can execute this and try this out. Okay, so let's move on to question number uh, uh, 10. If statement 6 was changed to s is equal to a then which of the following these statements do not get compiled to an equivalent assembly statement when compiled for maximum optimization right so let's say uh, statement uh, this statement is now that is let's say this statement is now changed to s is equal to a right so uh, when that happens oh, uh, now look at what happens to r r is equal to a into s which is in turn a into a right uh, so the compiler when compiled for maximum optimization figures this logic out and hence does not uh, does not translate this into an equivalent assembly rather directly in the r statement right so it translates it into r is equal to a into a and hence uh, that is being returned here so if you look at it, uh, 5, 6 and 7, so 5, 6 and 7 are not being translated into an assembly uh, equivalent and that's the right answer. Okay. Question number 11. 
After the execution of the following code snippet, what is the value by which the pointer variables p and pb are incremented respectively? So this in this question, uh, oh, note that pa is an int type variable and pb is a double type variable. So whenever you perform pa++, the address is being incremented. And since the address here corresponds to four bytes, so it's incremented by four. And similarly, pb corresponds to double data type and hence the address corresponds to an increase of eight bytes and hence it's incremented by eight. So four and eight are the right answers here. Now moving on to question number 12. Which of the following is the purpose of the assembly statement three in the above code? Now let's look at assembly statement three. So uh, when you look at this statement, right? What is being uh, performed here is ECX is being fed the value of the variable PA, let's say. So basically, that means um, ECX with the address of the C variable PA, right? Uh, because the uh, C variable PA is now uh, uh, an, a, a star, uh, it is in star PA over here. So you need to pass the address of address that is present. That is the first uh, location of this array PA is being now transferred to the register ECX and hence uh, option C is the correct answer for 12. Which of the following assembly statements is in, uh, assembly statements implement the functionality of the C statement four. Okay, so let's look at C statement four. What is happening is a comparison between what is present in ECX that is in the address that is pointed to by PA. Okay, so what is there here is compared with EC with EAX, right? It's compared with EAX. So uh, what does that mean? EAX, right? So uh, here there is a comparison statement. The very first comparison statement that PA of count that is the first location uh, of the array PA is now compared whether it is equal to zero. So that is the functionality of this statement, right? Now, uh, when you look at, uh, hence statement six, I'm sorry, yeah. Which of the following uh, implement the functionality of the C statement four? So, uh, Uh, I'm sorry, let's let's start over here for question number 13. Okay, question number 13. Uh, it's being asked that which of the following assembly statements implement the functionality of the C statement four. Okay, so this is the C statement four. And what are the assembly statements that implement this? So basically, there's there is a while loop. And there is a condition. And as well as there is a, a an array whose uh, index is uh, being uh, located using the value count and all of these correspond to statements 3, 4 and nine and 10. So it is, uh, the answer is actually statements three, four, uh, this is supposed to be statements three, four, uh, nine and 10. Okay. Moving on to question 14, the assembly statement eight maps to which of the following C statements. So let's look at the assembly statement eight, that is increment EAX. So here, uh, the count value is being stored in EAX and that is being mapped to this, right? So count plus plus is being mapped to uh, that. So that is the C statement number six. Am I right? Yes, C statement number six is the right answer. We will be omitting question 15 because it is framed incorrectly. We will move on to question 16. 
if the above uh, function r length uh, is called from the void main function as shown below then what will be the value that is printed okay so here uh, you can see that uh, the length of the array the array has uh, basically three elements which is one two and four now when this uh, is being passed as an argument over here to r length fn uh, then it ha it is supposed to calculate the length of this array when you work this out this loop basically counts until uh, it sees a slash zero which is uh, uh, it until it sees the last uh, uh, ad, uh, location that is one two and four so until it sees here it, it doesn't stop and once it sees that the loop uh, finishes and it returns and hence the correct answer is three okay Moving on to question 17. Mark the valid options that will be printed once the above C program is executed. Okay. Uh, so let's look at this. Here A is equal to 2, B is equal to 300. The addresses of these two variables are being passed to a function called swap, which have in star x and in star y as its parameters. Now we will look at what happens to each of uh, A and B in each of the statements. So star y actually corresponds to the uh, the the variable b in main. So that becomes two and a is two. Okay, and the next statement uh, x is equal to temp. So that corresponds to a being three hundred and b is equal to two. And you're returning three hundred, which is a. Okay, so the returned value here is three hundred and a and b are now three hundred and two okay so this is the right answer what is the value of the c variable a and b after statement 6 executes assume that the main function is executed first okay so uh, once the statement 6 alone executes the value of a and b is as follows as shown here right 2 and 2 and hence the answer is this what is the value in the c variable a and b after seven, statement 7 executes so that is also present over here it is b is equal to 2, a is equal to 300. Okay, then uh, moving on to question 20. Uh, if the above function in swap is now changed like this, now what is the uh, value that will be printed? Okay, so here let's look at this. So, what happens here in this case, temp is equal to y as opposed, as opposed to star y okay so star y means the value in y is being pushed to temp so let's look at what happened earlier temp was being uh, um, temp was being fed the value 300 okay but in this case temp is being fed the address of b okay so uh, when you look at statements uh, when when this statement executes b will become 2 just like uh, basically star y that is b will become equal to star x which is nothing but 2 in this case and star x is equal to star temp that is a will become value in temp whereas temp is nothing but address of b so uh, value in the address b is basically b right so a is equal to 2 will be written so a is equal to 2 and b is equal to 2 are the right answers and the return values again too okay yeah thank you for your patience thank you very much